Hello everyone, Mike Rempel from Excel Bytes with today's Excel blog post. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how we can create a chart that dynamically adjusts as we use the scroll bar to scroll through multiple lines of data. So let's see how we can do that in Excel. So here's our scenario. I have a little data set here that has 14 lines with dates and sales and a scroll bar with a chart. And as I click through the scroll bar, notice it moves 14 at a time. I have January 29th, now I have February 12th on top, February 26th, etc. Or if I click within the scroll bar, it only moves one item at a time. So let's see how we can create this scenario in Excel. First of all, if you notice, my columns start with column D, so I have hidden the main data that we have. So I'm going to unhide, and you'll see I have columns A and B that basically have 500 lines worth of data in them. So we're going to use that as our basis. We'll go over to sheet number two here and use this as the starting point. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create that small chart and have it be as high as how many dates I want to show at one time. So I'm going to just copy these headers and then I'm going to create a little area that has 15 rows of data. Next over in cell I1, I'm just going to insert the number one and you're going to see how we're going to use that in a minute. The next thing I want to do is go to my developer tab and I'm going to click insert and go down to the scroll bar here and I am going to insert it right here in column F. Okay. Next thing I want to do is right click on it and it's going to bring up format control and I need to enter data in here. Now here's the data that we're going to enter. Current value we're going to leave that at zero. That's not anything we need to enter. Minimum value, I'm going to show a minimum of 1. And maximum, I'm going to put 487. Now, what 487 is, notice I had 500 rows of data, and I'm going to show 14 at once. So 500 minus the 14 is 486, but I need to add one more just to get down to that last item. Incremental change is when I click on the arrows of the scroll bar, how many rows do I want to move at once and I want to move 14 and page change means when I click inside the scroll bar how many do I want to move at once and I want to move one and then my cell link is going to be cell I1 and now I say okay so I've set up my scroll bar now the next thing I want to do is I want to use the offset function and insert those into our small data area here that will pull the information from our large chart into our small area. So the formula we're going to use is equals offset. My reference is going to be cell A1, comma. The rows is going to be cell I1, but I'm going to make that a absolute cell reference. And the columns is going to be zero. Now when I hit control enter, it gives me 42,370. And that's just a reference to a date because this is currently formatted as general. So if I format it as short date, it gives me January 1st, 2016, my very first item. And if I copy that down, notice it gives me the first 14 dates that I have there. In the column E, I'm going to use the formula equals offset. My reference is going to be B1, the sales column, the first heading there. The rows, again, I'm going to move down whatever it says in cell I1. And again, I'm going to lock that as an absolute cell reference. And column-wise, I'm going to move over 0. So I'm going to hit Control-Enter. And notice it gives me the sales number. I'm just going to format that with a comma there. And I'm going to copy that down. So what we have here is the first 14 dates and the first 14 sales values. And as I click on the arrows for the scroll bar, notice when I click once, 
it moves 14 dates. I click again, another 14, etc. And it's going to keep doing that as many times as I click on the arrow. Remember the page number I set as one. So if I click within the scroll bar, just above or below that bar, it will only move one day instead of the 14. So that's why we had set two different values there. And notice that as I move the arrows, this number changes here because that's the reference to the cell. So every time I move with the scroll bar, that's going to increment and it's going to tell me what row I need to start with. And that is in the offset function, if you remember, it's going to tell me how many rows down. Again, if we take a look at the offset function, it's going to return a reference to a range that is a given number of rows and columns from a given reference. So my syntax is my reference, and then how many rows down, and how many columns over. Height and width are in brackets. They're optional, so I don't need to use those. So if we again take a look at our formula, my offset, my basis is cell A1. I'm going to go down however many rows it says in cell I1, and I'm going to move over zero columns because I want to stay within that column. And so every time I hit my scroll bar, it's going to move 14 items because that is the increment that I set for it to do. Now all I need to do is highlight my data, go to the Insert tab, select a column chart, put that in the location that I want it. In this case, I'm going to cover over my reference cell I1. And now every time that I hit my scroll bar, it's going to give me the graph of the 14 items that I see. Or if I click within the scroll bar, it's going to just move one at a time to give me that data. And that's how easy it is to do that in Excel. And there you have it. I hope you like what you see. If you do like what you see here, please take a minute to share this post on your favorite social network. I can be found on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So I hope you enjoy this. If you'd like to see more, please feel free to stop by my website, excel-bytes.com, and I hope you subscribe. So have a great day and happy excelling.